Now, as we have left off in, in the last part of this, and we're going to continue here, you understand? We're going to continue in this particular um, portion of it, and we're in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, which is speaking on prayer and is encouraging us, encouraging us to pray for our kings, to pray for our rulers. So when we say to, uh, pray, for, to pray for the president, that we should pray for Obama. There, there, there's some out there, I know some of y'all be like, you must be kidding. He's down with the New World Order. He's down with the Bilderberg, the secret society. He supports this and that that we don't agree with. But this is the exact reason to pray. This is the exact reason to use a greater power than the power that's in the world. Greater is he who is in I and I and I than he who is in the world. So to use our spiritual power in obedience to God, our Father, and the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So prayer is the key, and prayer is very, very important. Now, excuse me, here at verse 8, where it says, I will therefore that men, literally it is that males pray everywhere. They're saying the males. Now, here's the important teaching we hear a lot in the world about man up. You understand about manning up, that we need to man up. And, and that's a very true message. Even to us, though we've been the victims as black males, so forth and so on, in this white supremacist society, yes, we need to man up. But where do we begin to man up? You see, we begin manning up to the image and the likeness that we was originally created in. This means that we have to begin with obedience, you understand, to the good influence of our God and Father and the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have to begin with the word, you see, because that word that makes us new, and it's that word that's the living Moshiach, you understand, in each of us and in us collectively. If we want to know, well, how can we unite ourselves? How can we do, how can we all divide? It's because we are not, in the image that we were created in, but instead we've been living in the image of the beast, and we have to return, and, and, and this means to repent. And what's beautiful about the season that we are now moving into, which is known as the Rosh Hashanah, um, Yamim Noraim, and in particular coming up this Friday in about a day or so, is the Yom Kippur. You understand the Yom Kippur, and this is a time of fasting and intensive prayers. So this message of prayer is timely. This message of black man manning up. How shall the black man man up? The black man can only become a man again by recognizing, well, who is his creator? Who is the blameless creator? And, and the blameless creator is the Son. Our blameless creator is our Lord and Savior, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And how we can get to know him is not so much through the images, you understand, but through the word and through the truth. So when it says right here, Hawadi Apollo says, I will therefore that men, he's specifically speaking Bamarinya, when we read them hark, Bamarinya, in the Amharic, it says, in Gedi, Kuter Cement, verse 8 of Me'eraf Hulet, of Majamariya Yitu, Yahawariya Yapaolo Semelekita, Wodet Imoteos. It says, in Gedi, Wendoch, Wendoch, therefore, Wendoch, males, Wend, as we say, Wend Im, the male of my mother. Uh, hear the instruction of thy father, forsake not the law of thy mother. So when we call each other Wendem. When I say I am in a Wendem Yadin, I am the male of the mother, of the mother is the law. Uh, hear the instruction of your father and forsake not the law of thy mother, Proverbs 1 and 8. Here's an Ingedi, Wendoch, which means males now. There's Sifra in place. Hulu in all places, ale kutana without anger, ale kufu without evil hasab, asa without evil thought, without evil thought. Yetek desutin 
holy those which are holy in Joch hands, Iyanesu, Iyanesu, and Diyaf-Eliyu, so that they pray, Ifekadalo, I permit, I permit, or I, in a sense, I, I, I will, or I desire, now, Hawadi Apollos has given us a very, very important message here. And it's a message to the males. So this whole message about prayer, really, in, 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 in essence, is to the males. You know and it's to us as black males in particular. You know, it's so, it's so very interesting that the real change, the real power is a, obtained through this obedience and submission to the true will of God in Christ, especially when we know ourselves we'll be able to submit fully and truly to the true will of our God in our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. And it's important that we remind our brothers and sisters that, yes, Yeshua is black. But it's important that we stop not just at the over or the obvious relation or connection to us as black males, and we now get into the innocence. And there's only one way into the innocence, and that's in the spirit and in truth. So this time of Yom Kippur, you understand, 2011 is very, very crucial, and it's very, very important. But it doesn't stop there. You see, now the next part of this message, the next part of this message is concerning the daughters, the sisters, the mothers, the wives. Now, what does it say? In verse 9, it says, in like manner also. In other words, in the same like manner. And, and, and what manner is this? The, 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 the praying, the lifting up of holy hands. And what makes the whole hands holy is the thought. The thought must be without wrath. The thought must be without doubting. And it's interesting because it's doubting in English, but Marinya, it says, Ale kutana, ale, ale kufuasa, and without evil thought. So evil thought is doubt. Doubt, therefore, is evil thought, especially when it comes to tselot, when it comes to prayer. If we're going into prayer with an evil thought, you understand? Therefore, that prayer is ineffectual. We're wasting our time, wasting God's time, and we might be even drawing on us a curse because we are approaching him with the wrong mindset. This is why it's important to meditate. It's, it's, it's important to, to recognize self. You understand? Many brothers and sisters are asking about baptism. And baptism is another message that we like to teach them because it's not, the water is a symbol. The water is a symbol, but, but the word is the essence. You understand? So we have to baptize ourselves in that word. You understand? The truth and wash ourselves also in that word. But here to the daughters, the mothers, sisters, and the wives, it says, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided, broided hair, to say braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh woman professing godliness with Good works, in other words, that the, the daughters, mothers, sisters, the wives must adorn themselves with good works. Interesting enough, and we've been speaking about um, Brother Tavis Smiley on, on his particular show, and we caught tonight's show, I think it was, what, Wednesday going into Thursday night's show, and he had, um, I forget the sister's name, but she wrote a book, um, Mighty Be Thy Power, an African woman from, I think, Liberia. And she was speaking about the, the, the struggle for freedom and for justice and peace in Liberia, how the women, whether they were Christian or Muslim, they got together and they, there's a lot of different differences amongst them. And, and this is key to sisters and sisterhood because there's a message for sisterhood. And, and, and sisterhood is, is very much lacking, true sisterhood, not worldly, material, Babylon, sex in the city sisterhood, but true sisterhood is lacking among the sisters and these African sisters 